Welcome to Action Taken, the podcast about relevant topics for both Black and Christian communities. This is a podcast for seasoned believers, those who have hidden the Word of God in their hearts, as David spoke in Psalm 119 and 11. I'm your host, Coach Laverne. This is Lesson 28 with this episode entitled The Protocols, Coordination, and Cooperation for miracles. This is a new lesson. We have apparently ended kingdom living, which we have had 38 different parts to it, but we are starting a new lesson today. As always, the vision within must be allowed to penetrate without the ultimate vision. The ultimate agenda for the church is to get the bride of Christ ready for her bridegroom, Jesus, there may be other faith projects we will have to invest time in and in our generation. But until you see the heavens crack open and the trumpet sound, the vision for the body of Christ will always be to have his bride ready for a wedding and on time. We are constantly hearing Jesus is coming, Jesus is returning, and it is true, Jesus is returning, but nothing will happen until his bride without spot or wrinkle, is ready to meet him at the altar. The bridegroom will wait all day if he knows his beautiful bride is ultimately coming down the aisle to meet him. So if Jesus appears to be delayed, it is because we are expecting the bride to get ready all on her own. Having said all that, this is season two, April 24th to June 26th. It is a season of the narrow way, the narrow path, the season meant to eliminate a lot of participants. In other words, cut out the fat, and in some cases, literally, if you're carrying more weight than you should, get your weight down, your blood pressure, and your sugar levels down. Be a person given to fasting and prayer. Don't take it for granted that you will succeed in this season simply because you love the Lord. And the love loves you. The Lord loves you. The season is for the fit among us in spirit, soul, and body. So get the sin out of your life. That's if no one hasn't already told you. Okay. So, this is a lesson regarding miracles, as you can tell by the title. And this is a season for all of us to be walking in receiving a miracle or obtaining a miracle of some kind. It can be a new job. It can be a new car. It can be a new lifestyle. It can be uh, healing. It can be uh, betrothal and marriage. It can be a lot of things. So how do you posture yourself before the miracle comes? How do you interact with believers and unbelievers alike until the miracle comes? I'm glad you asked. So anyway, this is where we begin. Apparently, it's important to know how to behave and communicate. Mm -hmm. Around others. when believing for a miracle. Okay. Apparently there's a specific way to behave, a specific way to communicate around others. And others can be believers and non-believers. All right, so there's a specific 
way we behave and communicate when we're believing for a miracle. And what is a miracle? A miracle is something that you need the Most High God to intervene. And why would you need the Most High God to intervene? Because you can't do it yourself. Now remember, you and the Most High God are faith partners, right? And in any good partnership, there are two roles that must be played among the partners, right? You have your role and the Most High has his role. And you don't do what he can do, and he won't do what you can do. So, lack of a better word, stay in your lane. All right? Stay in your lane, do what you're being appointed to do, so that the Most High can do what He agreed to do. All right? You do what you're appointed to do, and He will do what He agreed to do. So, it is and I, I know some of you are getting way ahead of me. You say, oh, this is about faith. Well, yes, it is. And no, it isn't. If it was all about faith, then it would not explain why some people get miracles and others don't. What do I mean by that? If it was only about faith, why do some people get miracles and others don't? Well, some people get miracles because they not only believe him, but they trust him. So it's faith, but it's also secretly at the core, it's about trusting who it is you have faith in. You're not going to believe in a person or a thing If you don't trust it. So my point here is you must believe in the Most High God and his ability. All right. So you must trust in the Most High God to see what it is he agreed to do. Now you may not have seen a specific act he is agreeing to do, but because of your trusting relationship, you can take it on his word that he will do what he said he would do. Why is that? Because you trust in the relationship. All right. 
And because you trust in the relationship, you can tell or you can believe in that person because you have a relationship. In our case, it's a partnership, even greater. That's even better. It's like we're in business together, you and the Most High. He has his role and you have your role. You are appointed to do something and he has agreed to do something. And together, the two of you get things done. Together, the two of you get things done, all right, on this earth realm. So that's really what a miracle is. A miracle is when you need the most high God to intervene because you can't do it yourself. But it requires faith and faith requires trust and you don't get trust unless you can count on the person that you're trusting in in the in the relationship that you have with them all right so now that we know what a miracle is let's find out what why is it so important to have a protocol for a miracle why do you need a protocol for a miracle does that mean that you, you're, um, you're following the rules of heaven? Well, technically, yeah. It's more like the rules of the kingdom and the rules of the body of Christ. That's the point I'm trying to get at. So I'm not just talking about... Um, how, how, what's, this is, it's this and this rule, and if you do this, you get that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how do you get your miracle and stay on the right side of God, on the Most High God side? How do you get a miracle and remain on the right side of God. And when I say the right side of God, meaning that you are not operating against the principles of the kingdom. So you're basically operating within the principles of the kingdom. You know I would find a way to bring the kingdom living thing back into play. You know I would. That's that's my thing, is talking about the kingdom and how we operate in the kingdom. So at the end of the day, yes, we are on earth and yes, we are receiving a miracle, but it is in light of, not despite of, still being a member of the kingdom. So, even though I'm in this 3D world and I'm getting a miraculous intervention, I am still required to behave as though I'm a 5D dweller, a kingdom dweller. Because it, the way I look at it, and this could be just me talking, so take it for what it's worth. The behavior of a 5D dweller is far superior than the behavior of a 3D dweller.
let me give you an example. Um, I can be nice to someone, but my heart could secretly despise them on, th in, on earth, on earth. I mean, I could still be, I could be nice. I could do all the things appropriate uh, towards them, but my heart would betray me because I secretly despise them. Now on earth, they would say that's practical. Well, you know, be practical. You you gotta do this. You gotta get along with people. You gotta you know, play the game. That's fine on Earth. That would be appropriate, and people would congratulate you and applaud you and and sympathize with you. However, in the kingdom, not so much. In fact, it would not work at all, because in the kingdom, everything within you must be congruent with what's going on outside of you. In fact, what's on the inside of you, and this is part of what we say here at Action Taken, that what's going on on the inside of you is connected to what's going on on the outside of you. So we must be congruent. What do I mean by congruent? Meaning that exactly the same in two different states. They're in agreement, all right? So what's going on on the inside of you should match up with what's going on on the outside of you. So how do you get to a place, and I'm getting way ahead of myself, let me go back. 5D behavior says you must love your enemies. Well, if you're just faking it, that's not really love, is it? No, it's not. It's a, it's agreeable on th on the three D level on the Earth realm, but it's not so agreeable in the kingdom. Why? Because the Most High God gave who? Gave who? His most beloved son to the world. And the world is, lack of a better word, inherently evil. So he loves these people that are sinning against him. And I'm going to go, I'm going, I'm going to spend some time on this. I'm going to spend some time on this. And you have to get a kingdom mindset in light of what your miracle means to the rest of the kingdom. And it's, it's very, 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 um, sophisticated. I won't say complicated or complex, but it's sophisticated. It's not simple in some ways. Because on the one hand, you want your miracle because, oh, hey, I'm a righteous individual. And I am in the kingdom, and I the, the, the Lord says, the word of God says that I can have these things. Mm -hmm. But it said to seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's right. Or oh, in the Amplified, it says, um, I think it, it says it as uh, and his ways of doing right, I believe. I might, I might not be quoting right. I might be quoting the wrong Bible um, when I say that. But anyway, it's like the behavior of the kingdom. And all these things will 
be added to you. Right? So, when I say that 5D behavior often is superior to 3D behavior, it means that it's a higher standard of behavior. Okay? It means that you may have to go to greater lengths to exhibit kingdom behavior where the world would say it doesn't take all that. Okay? Now, Understand that at all times, the body of Christ, the members of Christ, the members of the kingdom, or the residents of the kingdom, As long as they are on this 3D earth, are going to need sustenance and something. What's sustenance? I'm going to look this word up so that I quote it correctly or better than I normally would. It's food, drink, as a source of strength and nourishment. It's food and drink as a source of strength and nourishment, right? And then something. What is something? That's everything on this earth that is not food or drink. <laughs> Let's see. And that includes anything that wasn't food or drink. Now that we know that is the case, we must make room for food and drink and stuff from the Most High God. In some cases, you will be responsible for going and getting this stuff yourself. And other times, it will be a collaboration between you and the Most High. Okay, the two of you together. Depending on the project, and even it, even when it appears you're doing it on your own, he is he is the sustainer of your help. So although it looks like you're alone, it is him working and moving and doing things that would cause you be sustained when. Others would desire to have you cut off. All right. I told you I was going to take my time with this. So just be patient. It's only five. I think it's only five points. So it's not really long. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's five points. So let's just get down to it. Now, what happens sometimes, and the reason why this came up, this prayer even came up, was it because um, I'm finding this, and this other times I've noticed this, that um, I've had other Christian friends who um, I had to separate from, not because they were evil to me in a very overt way, but and they may have done it on a covert way, but in some ways are the, the virtue that was on my life, the virtue that was on my life was somehow 
being tampered with that's one way of looking at it or being accessed for someone else to get a miracle All right now the that doesn't seem like a bad thing until you realize that while they're getting their miracle you're not getting a miracle and I don't and that's really in terms of um, 5d living this is not this is not um 5d this is um 4d where um how can i say this i want to say it like this in 5d there's no such thing as zero sum gain zero sum gain is a situation where one person wins and another person loses. Zero sum game is where one person loses and another person wins. One person's gain is, is another person's loss. One wins and one loses. That is not the kingdom way. That is 4D, the 4D kingdom. why would I say that well because you are operating in uh, both the knowledge of good and evil 4d is both knowledge of good and evil if Bo if one person wins and another person loses, that means that there's good for one and evil for another. Whereas what you would like is a win-win for everybody, which would be more like 5D. And people say, oh, well, that's not true. That's not how the kingdom really is. The kingdom really is that way. The problem is a lot of times people don't realize they're not operating by kingdom principles. So even though it's a win-win when everybody is in the kingdom. However, there are people who profess to be in the kingdom when in reality they are not operating by kingdom principles. So they are basically in delusion about where their feet really rest, what kingdom their feet really rest in. All right. So I'm going to say that again. Zero sum gain game is 4D behavior. Someone wins, someone loses. Well, then I could hear someone say, well, it could be the judgment of God. One person is winning and one person is losing. Well, if that is the case, then the problem, why would there be judgment if both are in the kingdom and they're both behaving wisely before, the, before each other and before a holy God? It should be a win-win because nobody is sinning. But if someone is not where they profess to be, then yeah, you could possibly be in 4D, knowledge of good and evil, and not know it. Or think you're more advanced than you are. Shoot. 
So, one person is believing for something. One believer, I'm going to say believer, I'm not going to say somebody or person. I'm going to say believer. We're talking about two separate believers. And one person is believing for something. And another person is believing for something. The power of God is strong on both of them. All right? The power of God is strong on both of them. But in some way, they sense that the other, the presence of the other or whatever is on their life is interfering or drawing from in a negative way from their life, causing them to, lack of a better word, as they say it in the church, miss God. However, if you behave with the understanding that at all times, at all times, the body is in need of sustenance, and substance or something so that would cover every possible need you could have so when Paul says for you to pray for one another he's not praying saying that just so you can feel good It will help you to not step on each other's spiritual toes, if that's such a thing, which it technically isn't. But you know what I mean when I say step on somebody's toes. Because the moment the two of you come in connection, in close proximity to each other, even in the faith realm, there's a certain amount of friction that occurs between the two sets of energies on your life. I'm going to say energy because it'll make sense when, when I get finished with this. Both of you have the presence of God on your life. Okay. Both of you have the presence of God on your life. And one of you is, one of you is believing for one thing and one of you is believing for another thing. Or one of you is believing for something and the other is believing for the same thing. So how do you stay in agreement with the kingdom and stay in agreement with each other? The only way to do that is to pray for one another. But not just your regular intercession, but pray like the high priest would pray. In the Old Testament, where he would pray for himself first, and then he'd pray for the people second. Now remember that Jesus, let me see, let me say it like I'm supposed to say it. So I don't lie. And. Let's see. Okay. I'm looking it up because I want to say this just right. Uh, hmm. But I want to get the item. Okay, now I'm missing it. 
Did I pass it? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh, dear. Um, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now to consider how great this man was unto whom either, um, okay, I don't want to go that far. But they're saying that Jesus was of the same order, even though he was not um, of the priesthood of Levi. Not of Levi, and nor was he a son of Aaron. Okay. So, in any case, but Jesus has been given the same... Um, rank of high priest and he does make intercession for us always standing at the incense altar of incense now we too are a royal priesthood and we ought to pray similarly like the chief priest would pray for oneself and for others in the body, as if it were our own body. We don't just pray for the people or pray about the people. We pray for them as if it were our own body. And when you pray for something as fervently as you would for yourself, you have a tendency to be a lot more mindful of what would hurt them or weaken them, hinder them, or deter them, or any of those other sort of things, so that you're less likely to step on each other's toes because you know what you ought to pray, because you have a Holy Spirit on the inside of you, always mindful of what it is you should be praying. When you pray for yourself and when you pray, for the body of believers who are as your own flesh. Yeah. I know this is really boring teaching, but it's good stuff. Hmm. Now your neighbor, your brother, your sister has need of things. But what happens when those need of things hinders your ability to get your own needs met? Technically, it shouldn't matter. Because if you understand that the Most High God is able to feed me, you, and everyone else on the planet who is a believer, every person under the ground who was a believer, and everyone who will ever become a believer should Jesus tarry. And every believer that is in heaven, in the mighty cloud of witnesses, and still have many le much left over. Okay, so where are you getting all this from? Where are you getting this idea from? Well, I'm getting the idea from the five loaves and the two fishes. I'm getting this idea from the cornmeal and the oil that did not waste in Elijah's day. I'm getting that from those two examples. Maybe, or let's even go further. The manna from heaven, the quail that came out of nowhere to feed the people. It did not cease until there was no more need for it. So what I'm saying to you is that the Most High God is ever to feed everyone at one time and still have, he can give more than enough 
so there will not be you know the rest room enough to receive it mm -hmm. yeah so let's get back to now that we know and we believe and are confident that our God is able to meet your need, my need, everybody else's need, what do we need to do? You can recognize that it's not uncommon for what you're believing for to overlap what's going on in the life of another believer. Now, what do I mean by this overlap? It means that maybe what you're believing for is not only just similar, it's the exact same thing. Or appears to be the exact same thing. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with you believe in for the exact same thing as someone else. And on 3D, in some cases, there may be only one of a kind. Now, if there's more than one of a kind, then great. Then you can have one and I can have one. That's great. But yet, I would still pray for you because if it's interfering with my the flow of presence of God on my life, then I need to pray for you so that not I, not only am I not in disobedience or rebellion, neither are you. Okay. But what happens if there's only one of a kind? What happens if there's only one husband named XYZ? What happens if there's only one particular placement of housing at a particular address what do you do then first i would go back to prayer to make sure i heard right to make sure my hearing is on point second i would ask for more wisdom about the situation in light of this new information related to this other person also wanting the same thing I want. Because there can be an issue with timing. Yes, this person is supposed to have it, but so are you. So is there something related to timing? What do I mean by timing? Meaning that it may not be right away that you get the thing, but it may be that you'll get it after someone else. I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a pre preacher by the name of Jerry Savell. He was uh, under the mentorship of, mentorship of Kenneth Copeland. And there was a situation where God had told him that Brother Copeland was going to give him, because Brother Copeland is, um, he's a pilot, and he frequently uh, believes God for airplanes. So anyway, Brother Copeland, I believe, was in the process of buying another one, or believing God for another airplane. Well, so was Jerry Savell. And Jerry Savell was in the process of, uh, let me go back, let me say it like this. God said, the Most High God said to Jerry Savell, I'm going to command Brother Copeland to give you his old airplane when he gets a new one. Okay. No problem. So, Jared Savelle started believing for the new airplane that was coming from the hand of Kenneth Copeland. 
Well, if I have the story correctly, somehow, some way, someone else got the airplane. Now, I would imagine Jerry Savelle would be in some place in his spirit like, well, hey, what happened? You could get pretty bugged out, especially if you need an airplane. You know, you're not believing for airplane just because, you know, you just want one. I mean, some people do, but I didn't think that was the case in this case. So anyway, Jerry Savelle had to wait about a year while this other person is flying his airplane. Uh, Jerry Savelle had to behave wisely in this situation. And in a year, he received the airplane because I think the other, either the other person gave him the airplane or somehow the airplane got into Jerry Savelle's hands. I don't, I don't remember if it was the guy that received it said, um, God told me to give you this airplane. But it was like, instead of going directly from Brother Copeland to Jerry Savelle, it went to this other person, and then the other person gave the airplane to Jerry Savelle. But ultimately, Jerry Savelle got the airplane. So in some cases, it's about, if you see there's overlap, where you're both believing for the same thing, and one person gets it before you do, you're going to have to behave wisely because basically when you see that situation occurring, think of it as being in transition. And we all have a whole series of recordings about being in transition, about how to behave in transition. Because if you don't know how to behave in transition, you'll find yourself, um, not receiving what you should receive simply because you're not behaving wisely. And wisdom, my goodness, is the first thing you ought to get, is the, it literally is the principal thing. It is the primary thing you ought to be focused on because without it, you cannot function well in the kingdom of God and live in this 3D realm. It's very, it's just, it's very difficult. So wisdom, wisdom is connected to a transition when you're believing for something where it's an overlap related to you believing God for something and someone else believing for the same thing. And maybe they get it first and you have to wait. Um, I can hear in my inner ear someone says well how does that relate to husbands well again i would say i would go back to prayer to find out am i hearing accurately if i'm hearing accurately i would ask for more wisdom how do i behave in the meantime when i see um who the person who i was supposed to marry marrying somebody else and it did, they didn't break up, and you. And of course, you don't pray for them to break up. You don't do the witchcraft prayers where uh, you're hoping somebody breaks up. You are praying for wisdom. You're behaving wisely because you're in transition. And transition is different for every person. It may last for a few months. It may last for a year. It may last for a decade. You don't know. Only the Lord knows. So you've got to behave wisely. In all essence, I w I've taken the position of I'm always in transition. There's never, as long as I'm on the earth, I'm always in transition. So I behave as if I'm constantly moving to another phase. So if I'm constantly in that position, I don't have a problem with quote unquote being in transition because I take the posture of being a person always expecting to move to another level or another dimension. 
constantly. Right? That that's that's just my own take on it. That may not be the most accurate way to pose it, but that's the way I'm believing. It. That's how I do it. Um Number five, make sure your motives are pure by allowing yourself to examine yourself, whether you're operating out of jealousy, envy, bitterness, or covetousness. Because those jealousy, envy, Bitterness or covetousness could leave you in a way that is not good for you. The reason why I say that is because those four, bitter, root of bitterness alone will get you, will cause you to not um, re receive anything. For example, let me look up root of bitterness. Because that one is Hebrews. Hebrews 12, 14, 16. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God, see the Lord. Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So within that, there is a lot of room to get into I'm going to say sin, but I don't mean like, ooh, you think, you know, like big major sin, like, ooh, you committed a sin. I mean, this is that, you know, little foxes type of stuff that it looks really small, but it's the kind of stuff that will close the gate on you so fast, make your head spin, and you don't know how it happened until you examine yourself and you go back and you realize what you've done. So when you start to sense jealousy or envy or bitterness or covetousness creeping up on the inside of you, you be absolutely brutal with it like the same way you are with fear or anger because they are just as divisive in your spirit. You cannot take it for granted that you will come out on the winning side when you have that on the inside of you. And a lot of times you will find yourself, so bitterness is especially, bitterness and resentful, like kind of like kissing cousins, that bitterness and resentment, um, where you've got a thing with somebody, you've got an issue with somebody, and I just thought of somebody I need to pray about. Um, give me a minute. I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> um, those two, bitterness and resentment, have a way of eating at your soul. And, and it just keeps growing. It doesn't stop until you deal with it. It does not stop until you deal with it. That being the case... You better get it under, you better get it under wraps because you cannot have that going on when you need everything in your spirit to be in alignment, in alignment with the kingdom of God. You must, you can't have it. You cannot have it. You cannot. So check your motives, examine yourself. By examining yourself,
And if that's not possible, use the help of the Holy Spirit. And get a handle on any jealousy, bitterness, resentment, or covetousness. Because without it, you could find yourself in a messy, messy place. So let's do our summary. Well, everybody, at any given time, if you're living in a kingdom for any length of time, you're going to be believing for something. Sometimes it's very small. Sometimes it's just the simplest peace of mind. Other times it's major healing, um, a, a major blessing, major uh, change in stature, status. Uh, lifestyle it can be a lot of things and it's not because you did something so great it's because the most high God desires f to demonstrate something to the people around you and that is something that you will have to continue to demonstrate not just in this season but in seasons to come okay so when, they, when you get this big fancy car, it's not so you can floss or stunt, but so that you can demonstrate that a most holy God is the one that made you rich. Okay? It's not about you. Sometimes it's about him. And it's not like he just need. Um, it's important for him to have this, but... Or for you to have that but it, it does demonstrate something to the people around you and that's what's really really going on so you're gonna have to know how to behave and communicate around others when you are in when you are in phase of believing for a miracle and you've got to behave appropriately in front of people who are your friends as believers you got to, uh, friends who are not believers and people who are non-believers and they're not your friends or whatever but in all cases behave wisely I would just take the position you I'm always in transition um, so I'm going to behave wisely um, this is in the case of needing a miracle. And these are not the corporate miracles I'm talking about, the separate private ones where only you, you may talk to God about it. You may, may or not have mentioned it to others. But in any case, there's a, a, a level of behavior that you have to exhibit, that you have to um, get accustomed to when you're in miracle mode. If you want to call it that. Um, yeah, when you're in miracle mode, you want to behave wisely. Just like when you're in transition, because actually being in transition and coming out of transition is a miracle. You may not think it, but it is. Because you can come out of, you know, go through transition, get your blessing. And if you don't behave wisely, then you might not keep your blessing. So it's an ongoing thing. The behavior that's connected to the miracle is closely related to kingdom living anyway. So behave wisely in kingdom lifestyle wisely at all times because you're constantly in a state of renewal, constant state of revival, constant state of uh although you may not be aware of it, but it is the Lord that is sustaining you from season to season, whether you realize it or not, or acknowledge it or not, okay? Um, understand that while you're in transition, constant a constant transition, understand at all times the body is in need of things or nourishment or refreshment from the Most High God. Just like you need stuff, your neighbor needs stuff, or your brother or sister needs stuff. So this is not 
this is not as long as you're on the 3d earth you're going to need something understand that the most high god is able to feed everybody on the earth at one time and still have plenty left over all right so don't trouble yourself about what if i get something and then miss you know i'm gonna bankrupt bankrupt heaven it ain't gonna happen that ain't gonna happen okay so don't you even worry about that it's plenty left over i give you another example the follows and two fishes how many i think he did more than one example of that even though the gospels speak of it differently in more than one gospel about those events i think there was more than one instance where he did the five loaves and two fish type of a miracle um, and in one case um, after he fed all of the people there were 12 big baskets that were allowed to go home to that little boy who uh, offered up the first round of seed seed faith okay there was plenty to go home so they, they were eating good in the neighborhood for a while anyway um recognize that it's not uncommon for what you're believing for to overlap what's going on in the life of another believer meaning that you might be believing for something similar if you believe for the same thing it's and i said this in another recording that it would be in your best interest to pray when you have a need and you're going to God anyway, pray for others in the body for that same need. It will make it so much easier on you while you're waiting because you're putting your focus on other people's needs while you're waiting. Um, some cases, your what you're believing for really overlap. It doesn't just overlap. It literally is on top of each other. You're believing for the exact same thing. If that's the case, then I will strongly suggest you go back um, and inquire of God whether or not it is the same, the Most High God, to see if it is the same if not uh, maybe you've heard incorrectly or maybe the other person's heard incorrectly if the other person's heard incorrectly but you still need to behave wisely because the especially especially if a situation where um because yeah, like young women they believe in god for husbands and stuff like that uh, you it can get pretty messy where women are getting bugged out because well god told me he was my husband and this and that and the other and if that's the case, um, you can start to get into a, very quickly you can get into a witchcraft spirit because now, like if the person is dating another person, but God said that you're supposed to get married to them, then you're gonna find yourself trying to break them up using witchcraft prayers. When in reality, it's not about the praying, it's about you exhibiting the right behavior and once he sees, the Most High God sees the right behavior in you, then some things will unlock themselves automatically. They will reverse themselves automatically. But the more you're pushing, pushing, and trying to get close to this person and get them to see you as the right choice and all that stuff, they're going to move further and further away. From you. But the more you work on, allow the Lord to work on you, and then um, the Most High God is sure he sees the right behavior and can look deep into your spirit to see that he's seeing the right things in you. That thing usually unravels itself automatically on its own. Um, and also ask for more wisdom. If you know, you're both believing for the same thing, it's the same person, it's the same car it's the same everything then ask for more wisdom and help and ask for help to behave wisely I didn't say that in the first part but ask for help to behave what ask for help to behave wisely because you're in, in transition because it's linked to a transition 
Okay. Um, now that we know that, um, make sure that your motives are pure. Because a lot of times when your motives aren't pure, you can't hear accurately. You're hearing. Is associated with purity. You have a hearing heart. Um, and 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 get over the thing of you know I I'm always amazed by the saints thinking that only one person can do this one particular thing in the body, like one cell makes up the entire body. Your body is has how many cells are in there in the body? I will. I'm going to ask the Googler how many cells are in the human body. Seven hundred and twenty as of 2013. This is October. This is a guess. From October 23rd. Seven hundred twenty-four trillion cells. And you think one cell in the body is going to do it all? No. This is a collaborative effort. You may not be aware of it, but it is. So, be mindful of that when you're thinking about what's yours and what's somebody else's. And keep yourself in the place of examination. Keep yourself in place of examination. You can, you cannot risk not having a, a pure hearing heart. It will impact your relationship with your Holy Spirit, and get a handle on any jealousy, envy, bitterness, resentment, or covetousness that may be aroused on the inside of you. Okay. So now that we've gone over the summary, let's go over the promise of the prayer of this prayer. Okay. Let's start. I is the uh, Most High God speaking, all right? I will help you and you, the body of Christ and those listening, I will help you to know how to behave and communicate wisely around others when you're believing for a miracle and another believer is also believing for a separate private miracle. I will help you to understand that at all times the body is in need of sustenance and something from me. I will help you to understand that I am able to feed every believer at one time and still have more left over. I will help you to recognize that it is not uncommon for what you're believing for to overlap what's going on in the life of another believer. I will help you to make sure that your motives are pure by helping you to examine whether you're operating out of jealousy, envy, bitterness, or covetousness. All right. So that's all I have for you today. I'm your host, Coach Laverne, for Action Taken. And if you didn't know, this podcast can also be viewed on YouTube in its entirety. So if you've watched it on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and select the bell notification for when new Action Taken podcasts drop. Our next broadcast is May 24th. Have a wonderful and prosperous day. See you soon.